Shalom, this is Ephraim Buckwold, the somewhat subdued Ephraim Buckwold, because on this Wednesday and Thursday we will observe Yom HaShoah, the Holocaust Memorial Day. And of course we'll remember the six million Jews, but it's also important to remember the values that the Jewish people live by. In Parshat Vayishlach in Genesis 32, we read of the encounter of Jacob with his brother after 20 years, with Esau, who's coming toward him with uh, 400 armed men. And the Torah tells us, Vayira Yaakov Ma'od, that Jacob was very afraid, Vayetzer Lo, and he was very distressed. The rabbis explain that Jacob was afraid lest he be killed, and he was distressed lest he would have to defend himself in self-defense and kill his brother. If this sounds familiar, it's because in 1972, after the Yom Kippur War, Golda Meir said, we can forgive the Arabs for killing our children, but we can never forgive them for making us kill their children. The story is told of a Hasidic rabbi who was taken captive together with Hasidim by a particularly sadistic commandant. And the commandant entertained himself by torturing these poor people for several weeks. And finally, he had enough of his uh, statistic, sadistic entertainment, and he told the Rebbe that uh, they were going to be taken out to be shot. And uh, the Rebbe told his followers that this was going to be their last Friday night. And they straightened themselves out as best they could. They washed themselves up, and they went out to the field and began to sing and dance, welcoming the Sabbath. The commandant, the Nazi, was very upset by this sight, and he grabbed the Rebbe and he says, don't they realize that they're going to be killed in just a few moments? Why are they singing and dancing? And the Rebbe said, they're singing and dancing because they, they're happy in knowing that if fate has guided them to be either the victims or the perpetrators, they're happy knowing that they are the victims rather than the perpetrators. And this is exactly what the Bible said about Jacob and his brother. This same value is expressed in a letter, a remarkable letter that was written by the widow of Rabbi Jonathan Sandler, Eva Sandler, during the Shiva. Uh, she was the wife of Rabbi Sandler and the two sons, Aryeh and Gavriel, who were killed in Toulouse by the murderous attack. And this is what she wrote. I wholeheartedly believe in the words of the verse, the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank the Almighty for the privilege, short though it was, of raising my children together with my husband. Now the Almighty wants them back with him. To all those who wish to bring consolation to our family and contentment to the souls of the departed, let's continue their lives on this earth by living their values. Parents, please kiss your children. Tell them how much you love them and how dear it is to your heart that they be living examples of our Torah imbued with fear of heaven and with love of their fellow men. Please increase your study of Torah, whether on your own or with your family and friends. Help others who may find study difficult to achieve alone. Please bring more light into the world by kindling the Sabbath candles this and every Friday night. This coming holiday of Passover is approaching. Please invite another person to your home so that they may have a place for the Seder to celebrate the holiday of our freedom. Along with our tearful remembrance of our trials in Egypt, so many years ago, we still tell over how in each generation they have stood against us to try to destroy us. We will all announce in a loud and clear voice, God saves us from their hands. The spirit of the Jewish people can never be extinguished. Its connection with Torah and its commandments can never be destroyed. May it be God's will that from this moment on we will only know happiness. These are the values that we have to remember on this Yom HaShoah.